Ralph Ellison, author of Invisible Man, participated in Focus at Iowa State. This is the annual Spring Festival of Arts. And Mr. Ellison, you have first been known within the field of uh, literature for a few years. You have gotten some uh, important awards, which I could uh, verbalize. But let me ask you this, which one of the various awards perhaps has been most satisfying for you as a writer? Well, because it came uh, so early, uh, I guess the National Book Award, it was quite a shock to uh, find this uh, being given you. And, and um, it, it made me feel that, that uh, all of the time, some uh, period of seven years over which I was writing the book, uh, was was well spent and 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 something else too that there was a a generosity of uh, uh, of uh, attitude on the part of people in publishing who give the awards and that they uh, uh, were not uh, uh, going to uh, put me in a uh, in a second class position because of my race, but they were interested in my ability to write. It, it, this was a very, very important thing to discover when I was, when I just published my first book. Now, did this make, um, in a sense, um, a major difference as far as uh, your real dedication to continue your writing? Would you have considered not writing without some of these encouragements? Oh no! Uh, uh, the right, you don't write for prizes. Mm -hmm. You 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 write because this is the way you are most alive, the way you you feel that you can be most effective in confronting life and society and yourself even. So uh, they are, they are the cream <laughs> that comes. So, but you you you. I'm not knocking it. I'm very proud of it. Indeed, you know, today the National Book Award is a, uh, is a uh, cash sum of $1,000. Uh, in my day, it was a gold medal. And I'm very proud of the, the medal because once in a while now I can make $1,000, but I can't pick up another one of those <laughs> well, the medallions. Critics, the critics were kind to you, in a sense, from the very first, weren't they? Well, they, they were kind. Some. Uh, 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 were not. So one uh, very uh, widely syndicated uh, literary columnist uh, uh, described my book as a literary race riot. <laughs> 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 uh, there were a few others who were short-sighted in, in, uh, uh, in their descriptions of the book, but what can you do? You, I don't fault them, but they didn't quite understand what was going on. Uh, sometimes it, the fact that uh, of my racial identity was more important than, than uh, what I was writing about or how, uh, how I managed to write it. But generally, the, 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 the reviews were perceptive. And incidentally, some of the most perceptive reviews that I received were written by women. And they were uh, women writing for, for papers in the South. And they, they were white. How do you account for this? <laughs> well, uh, I don't account for it, except uh, uh, there is no, uh, uh, no way of deciding where intelligence is going to show up <laughs> in the United States. And uh, we do know that we have been teaching uh, literature in our colleges and writing and courses in criticism. And so the people go wherever they came from, or they go wherever they can get jobs. And so you must always be alert and always be at your best because you don't know who is giving you the eye. <laughs> now, do you uh, do any work as far as a critic at all? Well, my book of, of, uh, of uh, essays, Shadow and Act, is a book of criticism for the most part. Uh, they are uh, uh, mainly cultural criticism concerned with uh, various books, jazz, various uh, uh, intellectual problems. I don't call myself a critic, but uh, I do uh, uh, function 
critically, I, I do have some familiarity <laughs> with the game. And I think criticism uh, for writers, uh, so-called creative writers, is one part of the creative process. You, you uh, project, and then you look at what you project. You, you, you see whether it's working. You identify what, where it's going. It's a two-way process. But I prefer just to try to write my own stuff and leave the criticism to other people. <laughs> Now, what are you working on at the present time? Various I'm work things? Yes, various things. I'm working on a, uh, a book of essays uh, and uh, literary subjects, American culture, uh, one essay on the American language and so on, um, some music, uh, essays on music and on certain figures in jazz. Then I have another small book that I'm putting together. And this will not be a collection of essays, I hope, but a little book on the aesthetics of jazz, I mean of the blues, which will get into jazz. And I'm writing a novel. Now, how does this work as far as, uh, as, far as your own patterns are concerned? Do you switch off from time to time on this, which uh, one of these <laughs> things you concentrate on, or uh, do you... Uh, give uh, energies in a given period of time directed toward one thing? Well, I try to give most of my energies to the novel, but uh, uh, from time to time I'm called upon to do certain essays, um, and I write those essays, and they are, that represents a certain interruption of the fiction. But they will go into, an, uh, into the book of essays, and it's just... Uh, you have to, to uh, keep one section of your mind a little bit separate from the other, but also realize that it's much more important to write a piece of fiction than to write a piece of, of uh, criticism. That is for me. Why? Well, because I, I can reach more people uh, by projecting uh, uh, actions and characters and telling a story. Uh, it has a way into to, to uh, more people than uh, dry intellectual analysis of uh, some particular aspect of culture, personality. Now, you indicated with the uh, writing of Invisible Man that you had to uh, then at one point pare down about 200 pages worth. <laughs> is this going to be a problem that you will face with the next novel, or is this just a difference in the time, or what? You no, know, I think it's a problem I'll face with, with this novel, uh, not because I don't have a certain discipline, but because uh, the imagination sometimes takes off. Uh, it takes off just like, a, 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 say, a jazz musician who is um, on a flight of improvisation. So I let, I let it go as, as where it wants to go, and then I pare it down. It's better to have it all down than to have missed an opportunity of writing yourself into something startling and, and interesting. And so it's just a matter then of having to take the... <laughs> That's <laughs> right, and then cut, cut your heart out to cut out those words. <laughs> and our guest has been Ralph Ellison, author of Invisible Man, and we will look forward to your next novel. Do you have a title for it yet? No title. We'll just have to wait for that, and thank you. Thank you, sweetie.